What's good, everyone? It's Chambers from ChambersMixed.com. Today is going to be a very important and educational video for y'all. I'm going to be going over the top three things that artists look for when they're picking beats. And this is coming from someone who has a bunch of major label placements with a lot of big artists. So I'm going to be showing you my tips and what I've picked up on catering more to the artists when it comes to making beats. Three things we're going to be going over today is one, space, two, structuring, and three, the mix. Artists need space in their music. And I'm putting this at the top of the list because I think this is something that a lot of producers tend to struggle with. Because they always think like there's something missing from their beat. They're like, what, what's missing from this? I need another instrument. I need another piano. I need another flute. I need another guitar. Whatever it is, there's something missing from this beat. A lot of producers are like that. But the thing is 99.9999923799% of the time, it's just a vocal. That's all. You're not missing some key instrument. You're just missing a vocal from an artist. But people don't realize that. And then they go and they overcrowd their beats with all these instruments. So when it is time for artists to record on it, it's like, imagine like a car that seats five people. And you already got five people in the car. And you're trying to get in the car too? It's like, it's crowded. You can't do it. The people represent the instruments and the car is just a beat. Like sometimes you got to kick some people out of the car so you can make room for yourself. That's a terrible example, but that's what I'm trying to say. Just really sit and listen to your beat and think, do I need to add more stuff or is it just missing a vocal? And a good way to practice that is when you're making beats, pretend that you are an artist. Try to come up with your own flow of rapping or singing over your own beat because a lot of producers do that. They'll just be making beats, right? And they're locked in and like you'll see their mouth moving or something. It'll just be like this. Sometimes you'll see that in a producer. They got they're all locked in with the headphones in and everything. It's because they're putting their self in the mind of an artist. They're saying, how would an artist see or listen to this beat? And would they be able to rap over it or sing over it? It could just be mumbling like da 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 da, da like in the flow of a rapper. That's a great way to practice seeing if the beat is too full or not full enough. So to explain it further, I made two different beats. I made one that's really, really simple that would probably be super easy for an artist to get on and another one that's a lot more complicated. It's not impossible for an artist to get on it, but it's really, really busy and it'd be kind of difficult. So here's the difference, right? First of all, pay attention to the way this session looks. I have what? Three tracks up here, a piano, a bass, a vocal, and I got my drums. It already looks very, very simple, right? But most artists are gonna appreciate when there's a lot of space in the beat. You don't need to have 15 melodies going on because the main thing that people are listening to is the vocal, the voice. So I'll play from here, just listen to how simple it is and how easy it could be for a rapper to just put a flow on it. Like imagine someone like 21 Savage. Like that's the first person that comes up to my mind. You see how much room like I leave for him to just put his own flow on. I don't need a whole extra thing. It's literally just a repetitive piano with a bass note and some drums. That's all he's gonna need, right? You don't need a bunch of synths and counter melodies and blah, blah, blah on every single beat. You know, sometimes focus on simplicity. Over here, I just add a little vocal. And even with my choice of vocal sample, the vocal's not doing a lot. It's very sustained, just holds out. Keeps it simple. It doesn't like throw anyone off when I add it. And that's like a prime example of a really simple beat that an artist could just jump on immediately. There's no crazy change up, not a million melodies. It's very easy for them to just get comfortable and flow over it. Now let's compare that to something a lot more complicated, a lot more busy. It's going to be difficult for an artist. So remember what I said in the beginning of this when I said, look at the session, look at this compared to the other one, bro. Like this is all melodic stuff. This is all drums. You can't even fit it on one page of FL. This is how busy this thing is, bro. How many, the amount of instrument layers that I put into this song. Now, this is not to say that it's bad to make beats that are busy or have a lot of melodies in it. It's just, if you're trying to appeal to an artist, most times, most times, they're gonna want something that has space on it so they can put their voice on it. Now this beat, once you hear it, you'll know, but like, this is something for like NBA Youngboy. He's a lot more experienced with getting on beats that have a lot of layers. Like if you ever listen to his music, all the pianos and the organs, the vibraphones, the guitars, like 
It's a lot of layers, but that's what his sound is. But obviously not every artist is like that. Definitely not. Let's just listen to this so far. Here are all these layers that I just did. This work gets busy right here. I mean, listen to this. We got an organ. Melody with the organ. We got a slide of an organ. We got a vibraphone. A guitar. Like all this. I'm not gonna say that no one is gonna pick this beat, but compared to the other beat, I can guarantee you that a lot more artists are gonna pick the simpler one because it has a lot more space and a lot more freedom for them to express themselves vocally. Think about space and also what type of artist they are. Are they used to stuff like this where it's really busy or are they looking for something more easy and more simple? And for the next tip, we're gonna be going over structuring the one similarity between this session and the other one that i showed you is the structure you can clearly see that they both have some type of structure to it it's not just the same thing being repeated over and over right so let's get into that all right so here's another beat that i made and as you can see it has some type of structure to it some beats that you hear today are just the same beat over and over a lot of stuff that you'll hear playboy cardi or pierre born on is just the same beat over and over and over and over but it's still good like it's, it, it doesn't feel repetitive but most times a song is going to have structure meaning it's going to have an introduction it's going to have a hook or a chorus, whatever you want to call it. It's going to have a verse, might have a bridge. It's going to have an outro, stuff like that. This is also something that artists look for when they're picking beats because they want to know the section that they have when they're writing the hook that's going to be catchy, that they want everyone to sing along to. They want to know when the verse is. You know, structuring is very important. And like the amount of bars that you put in a hook or a verse or intro, outro, all that stuff is all very significant in the beat. But I'm about to show you guys all that in this beat that I just made. You can really distinguish the differences between the intro, the hook, and the verse because of the instruments that I'm using. In the beginning, I'm using a piano and a choir sound, and in the hook, I'm using a more simplified version of the piano with a guitar. Then in the verse, we come back to the piano. Like, you don't have to change instruments, but like, here's a good example. Let's say you have like a nice piano chord progression for the hook that has a melody. Then for the verse, you take the melody away and it's just the chords. So it gives the listener and gives the artist some type of signal that, okay, we're in a different section. So let's listen to this. Here's the intro, and then the hook starts right here. And that's where the verse is again. So let's dissect it right here. Most times I have an eight bar introduction. And this one is unique because it's kind of like a build up. Not all my beats are like this, but this one has like a build up with the piano and the choir, right? Nice reverse thing. Into that guitar. With the chords. Now obviously you could tell the hook starts here because we got all these drum sounds come in, right? Now, most times my hooks are 16 bars long, right? So here's eight plus another eight. So it's the entire time that the guitar is playing is the hook. And the verse starts like there's a complete change in energy. Let's listen to this. We go from the guitar and the choir and all these drums into just this chord progression. Like that's when you know, okay, we're in the verse now because there's a complete shift in sound and energy. And that's what's gonna differentiate a hook from a verse, right? And we continue on in the verse. The guitar is back, but you know it's not the hook because look, we barely have any drums in here. 
It's all about taking things out and adding things at specific times to indicate a change. My verses almost always are 24 bars, right? So we have eight bars here, another eight bars here, another eight bars here, eight times three is 24. And then for the last eight bars of this verse, I just did the piano and the choir thing again. And then after that, I just repeat it, right? Here's the hook again, right? Here's the verse. And then after that, I repeat the hook again, and then I have my outro. Overall, eight bar intro, 16 bar hook, 24 bar verse, 16 bar second hook, 24 bar second verse, 16 bar third hook. And then I have an eight bar outro. And the outro, like I'll put it down an octave, you know, like fade out a little bit. But yeah, that just goes to show that structuring is important with artists. Look at any of my placements that I have. Every single beat that's out there has structure to it. Best example I can give you, No Time by KSI and Lil Durk. That has a clear intro, that has a clear hook when KSI does the high voice, and then he has the verse, then another hook for KSI, then Dirk comes in, and then there's a bridge. A lot of songs these days don't have bridges, but that song does. There's a bridge that KSI does with some piano chords under it, all that stuff. Then you have the hook again, and then a little outro. That might be one of the best like commercial examples of structure structuring that I've worked on at least. But that brings us to the final tip that I want to give you guys is have a decent mix. So let's open up a new beat for that. All right, so mixing beats. So many producers always have questions about this. So I'm gonna try to clear it up as best I can for you guys. So in the industry right now, at least with rappers I know, nine times out of 10, they're always using two tracks and a two track is just an mp3 or a wave file of the beat they call it a two track because you have the left and the right track right you put them together that means it's stereo if it's not in stereo then it's mono it's just straight down the middle but when it's stereo you have your left ear and your right ear combined so you could hear it in both ears so it's called a two track they throw that into pro tools or whatever software that they're recording on they record over it so it's important to have a decent mix it doesn't need to be perfect because if you're the producer then you're the producer you're not the one who's mixing and mastering the song unless you are then you don't need to be listening to me right now you already know what's up but for producers who are strictly producing and who aren't like there for the mixing and the mastering process it is very important to bounce the beat out as a decent mix because there's two things that could happen the artist is going to record over a two track and and just put the song out as is which does happen a lot or they record the song you know do do their thing and then someone's going to ask you for stems eventually and then you send the stems and they get it mixed properly and all that stuff and then they put the song out but there is always a very high chance that they're just going to go with the two track and just put it out as a song so that's why your mix needs to be good it doesn't have to be crystal sparkling clear and all that stuff but it needs to be like usable so i just brought up another beat that i made as an example here's what it sounds like <laughs> what you don't want right you don't want a mix that's terrible that's like this oh, that's that's annoying me listen to how loud the music is compared to the drums 808 mad weak like people have beats like this because they're too scared to push the 808 you barely hear the bass you want to have pretty good levels and a great way to learn more about mixing is my online class i have an entire course video on basics of mixing and also structuring like the last technique that we went over but not only that but full courses on music theory and scales and chords and melodies i have full courses on trap production whether it's dark trap melodic trap ambient trap i just put out my first r&b course where i'm showing you how to make a full r&b beat from scratch also very important the placement breakdown course is on the online class so if you really really want to know what artists are looking for like placement wise i'm showing you everything about how i made the beats that got me my placements but yeah that's the online class such a great resource for producers today like, i really wish i had this for myself in the beginning but take advantage of that it's chamberscourses.com join today but continue on you also don't 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 do this either i would advise you to lower the volume on your device right now because it's probably about to be bad <laughs> Don't, that, that was an exaggeration, but like, like, you don't want it to sound like that. The whole thing is clipping to don't have it too weak and don't push it too far. You want to have a nice, like in the middle, you don't want to hear any clipping sounds, no distortion noises. Like right here.
that's great. It's not distorting like crazy. You can hear each and every sound and it will be easy sonically for an artist to just record over that. So always keep in mind the beat that you send the artist might just be the beat that comes out in the song. Yeah, those are three important tips that I've learned when it comes to working with artists who are looking for beats. Space, can't go wrong with keeping it simple. Structuring, make sure you know the intro, the hook, the verse, all that stuff. And mixing, have a good mix that's not too low or too distorted. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you learned something and you can apply that to your own beats. And remember, there's a whole lot more knowledge awaiting you at chamberscourses.com for my online class. Please be sure to go check that out and sign up. I would love to have you. There's new content every single month. And we're not stopping link in the description and in the comment section subscribe if you're new drop a comment down below let me know what tutorials you guys want to see in the future it's chambers and i'll see you on the next one peace <laughs>